Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Anu Hitol. For our show this time, we'll take a look at some of the really interesting things that have been happening at Think Tech. We thought we'd take a look at some of the new things that are going on at Think Tech in programming, in technology, and in outreach. For one thing, we've changed the duration of our talk shows from 45 minutes to 30 minutes, and everyone likes that a lot. For another thing, we've added a bunch of new talk shows, including Law Across the Sea with attorney Mark Schklov, Rehabilitation coming soon with Aaron Wills, a criminal defense attorney, Talk Story with John Waihe'e, former governor of Hawaii, Quok Talk with Crystal Quok, a radio and TV star from Hong Kong, Ruderman's Roundtable with State Senator Russell Ruderman, and SBA America with Jane Sawyer, director of the SBA in Hawaii. These new talk shows also include Savvy Chicks with Bon Vivant Chantel Seville, The Keys to Success with consultants John and Danelia Newman, The Art of Thinking Smart with financial advisor David Cheng, and Condo Insider with condo expert Richard Emery. To say nothing of the rest of our 30 streaming talk shows, our live shows stream from remote locations, and our weekly feature shows on OC16. We've also added some important broadcasting equipment, including a backup TriCaster unit that will allow us to continue our 24 by 7 streaming even if our primary unit goes down, and a new tech talk show unit that uses special Skype software to achieve better video and audio on our Skype calls, which are so important to allow us to interview guests around the world. we're developing new in-house software to help us schedule our Think Tech talk shows. This project is a work in progress and a labor of love for us, one that we believe will make it considerably easier for everyone involved, the people on our staff, our 30-plus hosts, and our dozens of weekly guests to produce our talk shows in 24-hour live stream. we want to tell you about our terrific summer intern program involving three local college and high school students who joined us this summer for some rigorous training and experience in video production. It was a great success. Our three interns have been Diamond Cabildo, a junior at the Academy for Creative Media at UH Manoa, Haley Ikeda, senior at Kalaheo High School, and Emily Kurth, a junior at St. Andrews Priory. The program culminated in our graduation ceremony and celebration earlier this month at which all three interns were awarded highly prized ThinkTech Certificates of Completion. It was a fine celebration of a wonderful experience for everyone concerned. We are sorry to see them go, but we hope they will come around later and say hi. After all, they have become part of our ThinkTech family. Do you have your black robes? Uh-oh. No black robes. How can we do this? going to everybody. Okay. Gentle round of applause, please. Wait for everybody to come in. Nice and slow. 
Wait, wait for everybody to come in. Hi. Okay, more, more. Okay. Okay, you may be seated. We'll do this program again, and we'd love to have you guys come back and be with us and help us. Uh, as we said in the script just now, you're part of our family. You're per permanently, I mean, for life. Like, you know, you're a part of the Priory family or the Callahale family or the ACM family. You're part of the Think Tech family. Now that, you know, we've come this far and we're about to actually consider giving you certificates of completion, we'd like to give you a short uh, examination. <laughs> uh, Carol and I will, will present the diplomas. First uh, to Diamond Cabildo. Diamond, will you stand up to be invested? Okay. This is your diploma. You have well earned it. You have been a stunning, stunning intern for us. I'm really grateful for this, for this opportunity to um, learn from people, experts in this field of broadcasting. And um, this, is, this experience is really changed me as a communicator, as a person, and as uh, a team member. Okay, Haley, can you come up and be invested? <laughs> Get your, do you show them, please, would you show what people they can see what it looks like? These are really nice. Carol designed them, and I hope you put them in a nice place. Congratulations on, on succeeding with a certificate of completion here from ThinkTech. Well, it's been really great here, and I've learned a lot from everybody here and I'm so glad that I had the chance to do this. This is my dad, Gary, and my sister, Phoebe. Yeah, they've helped me along this journey. A third diploma uh, goes to Emily Kurth. Emily, Hi, congratulations to you, wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Kurth, I'm an intern here. <laughs> Can I have your business card? <laughs> you did that so well. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> I can never watch the news the same way again. Sounds like an Academy Award. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's been great, and I met a lot of people, and I know way too much about politics now. Okay, so now the next step is, uh, is that all three of you uh, will be permitted um, to put the ribbon, which is on the left side, and to move it to the right side. It's a kind of tassel thing. Okay, so can you, this is very, very important, yeah? Oh, that's Just turn, turn the ribbon, the ribbon is on your left side. Okay, this, this is the official acceptance of, of, the, of, the, of the certificate of completion. Thank you very much, a, a round of applause for the tassel. Now we have, we have two sets of parents and I was hoping uh, that they would give us a few remarks. I'm glad that she, that my daughter Haley was able to experience this um, opportunity, it um, noticeably changed her in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving Emily the opportunity. We, we wondered what the heck she was doing when she, we would drop her off and pick her up. <laughs> have a little bit better idea and, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. She loves the video editing and she's learned quite a lot which she espounds to uh, Corrine when she picks her up non-stop talking the whole way home so <laughs> thanks. Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Diamond, Diamond, uh, I met your mother a few weeks ago and she's, she stayed with us while we finished your movie so we could submit it on time to OC16 so regards to her too. I'm gonna lead the toast if you don't mind. Remember that in each stanza, each repetition of the word bonsai has to be twice as loud as the previous, okay? So, Shinro, Shinpu, Bonsai! 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 Very excellent, thank you very much. <laughs> that concludes our ceremony, and the orchestra will now play the recessional. <laughs> They're going to give you a tour. Green screen studio. Yay. There's four cameras here. Yes. Camera four, three, two, one. And, yep. 
Here are two seats we have for the host, who will sit here, and the guest who will sit here. And attached to the table here are four mics, and we mic them up. Are we going to? No. No? Nah. Yeah. We ask them to put the mic up under their shirt and clip it on so that we can record their audio. Uh, camera one shows both of them in one shot. Camera two focuses on the guest. Camera three focuses on the host. And four is for any props that are on the table. Here we have lights, which are turned on and off with a little switch that you can step on. A vital part of the internship program is networking and getting people into this room. That process begins with a firm handshake taught by Carol Munley. Then it is the guest book, the business card, and water. So that is a vital part I wanted to explain that takes place out there. And then you must interrupt their conversations and get them seated quarter till, hooked up with the mics, focused with the cameras, and then the camera breakdown, and then they start. Then we sit and wait for something to go wrong, and we fix it. There's cameras, there's lights, there's the green screen uh, where we can teleport ourselves to anywhere in the world, um, even underwater. I think we're good. I think we can move on to our Next room, the control room. This is our control room. This is where all the actual digital magic happens. Here is the TriCaster and monitor duel where we actually, or where Zuri, the actual empress of this whole facility, um, operates the live broadcast from these machines. Um, then we have our Skype machine here. We've got an extra computer here, because we're cool. And our live um, broadcasting TriCaster. So while this operates the live broadcast itself, this is the one that um, streams all the videos live to the website. Uh, and this is always on and always playing, as you can see. All of us sat in this chair and operated a live show at one point and probably panicked and cried during that show but we all made it i think emily actually did one yesterday you want to say some words about that when you watch the news please think about those behind the scenes not only filming but switching those those switches from the different viewpoints the different cameras that all takes place live with the push of a button, the subtitles that show up, the names, the pictures, the intros, outros, all of that is done by the push of a button and can be done simultaneously. So respect producers, because it's really hard. And I screwed up so much, but I made it through. Thank you. I'm here with Gary Akeda. Gary, why are you here today? Attending my daughter Haley's graduation from ThinkTech. She's always had an interest in media, um, and doing this kind of gave her hands-on in the real environment, which is really nice.
I am here with Sherilyn Lau, who is a director on the board, on the board of directors of Think Tech Hawaii. Tell me why an internship like this is important for our students in Hawaii. Internships are always important for students because it gives them real world experiences, hands-on experiences. They get to see what it's really like to work on the job. I'm here with Marianne Sasaki, who is a host of Life in the Law and a, an attorney downtown. She also helped our interns. We um, got together early on in their project about transgendered uh, teenagers that were shown on OC16, and we analyzed the project and broke it down so that we could all do specific tasks. I helped them get it, the ball rolling. I'm here with Nick Sexton, who is Think Tech Hawaii's systems manager and floor manager. As uh, part of the ThinkTech staff, everyone had to help out a little bit and just giving um, an accurate representation of the entire ThinkTech operation. I'm here with Ian Davidson, ThinkTech Hawaii social media manager. Tell us your role with our interns this summer. I've had the opportunity to hang out with them and teach them stuff, answer questions really. Like I tried to make myself uh, available. It was really interesting hanging out with them because then, you know, they have a perspective on things and I learned a little bit too, I think. All in all, this has been a great summer and an exciting time for ThinkTech. We hope you have enjoyed seeing some of the things that have happened at our studio over the past few months, that you will better appreciate our operations and our aspirations, and that you will watch and enjoy the product of our efforts. Check out our shows at thinktechhawaii.com and on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. We love doing it and we do it all for you. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long, and some people listen to them all night long. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our programs, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. Help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in Hawaii. We want you to stay in touch with us, and we'd like to stay in touch with you. Let's think together.
If you'd like to speak out on an issue or event, you can. We love the First Amendment and we love hearing from our viewers. You can come down to our speaker's corner and make a video statement on the web. See thinktechhawaii.com. And you can also call in and join our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in at 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. Call in. We look forward to hearing from you. I'm Elise Anderson with this week's Think Tech Commentary. With primary elections fast approaching, it's a good time to consider the importance of maintaining a two-party political system in Hawaii. I'd like to eventually see a three- or four-party system. It can get frustrating that our generation's libertarian principles don't fit neatly into either binary platform. But first things first, Hawaii's extreme one-party status now poses such real risks in terms of transparency, unfunded liabilities, and government inefficiency that before discussing the ideal, we must address the urgent. It's well known that Hawaii's remained a Democrat stronghold since the 1950s, when 442nd veterans returned home from World War II and took over from conservative predecessors. After Governor Bill Quinn held office during statehood, Hawaii has only elected one governor who was not a Democrat. That was Republican Governor Linda Lingle, whose local career soon ground to such a halt that she relocated to Illinois after leaving office. Hawaii's state legislature is the nation's most imbalanced. Our state Senate, with only one Republican and 24 Democrats, boasts the only one-member minority party of any legislative body in the United States. Our State House of Representatives may have seven minority members, but the American Conservative Union and Heritage Foundation consistently rank our House Republicans as the least conservative in America. Their emphasis repeatedly falls on quiescing to the Democrat agenda rather than uniting behind an agenda of their own. All year, two warring factions within this seven-member minority caucus have clashed more with each other than either has with the majority. More than anything, a one-party system destroys transparency. Caucuses meet behind closed doors so members need not explain their votes when the ruling parties already agreed to pass a bill. Amendments can be made and killed without justification, too. This year, spectators received little open explanation as to why certain bills on controversial issues, like Airbnb, Uber, stream diversion, and motor vehicle cost hikes, lived, died, or got amended. Last year, the Senate replaced its president during a floor session, but never said why. Earlier that year, a cabinet nomination was made and withdrawn after weeks of public protest without the governor ever explaining his motives for the appointment or its withdrawal. Voting, tax-paying citizens deserve, at the very least, to understand the decision-making processes that impact so many aspects of their lives. And transparency only survives when advocates and opponents must debate on chamber floors, not when they just settle their decisions tit-for-tat behind the scenes. Hawaii's leftward imbalance has inflated union influence beyond the reach of checks and balances. We see the effects of this each year. Even last week, the HGEA convinced legislators to hold a special session to overturn Governor Ige's veto of a hospital worker compensation bill. This now puts Hawaii at risk of violating employee retirement system compliance standards. Unrivaled union power can also explain rail cost overruns, prison employee absences, police transgressions on Kuhio Avenue, furlough Fridays and the abysmal standardized test performance of our schools, and more. In 2013, Forbes recorded Hawaii's average welfare handout at $61,000 annually. That's $10,000 more than the second highest state, Massachusetts, at $51,000. Compared to a national average around $20,000, we are an extreme outlier. I dare not argue one party better than the other, and this presidential election may redefine both anyway, but let me say that unbounded extremes in either direction can raise major hurdles. A more formidable two-party system would help both parties, even the dominant one, especially during primary elections. At the moment, Hawaii's Republican Party is so weak that many conservative voters pull Democrat ballots on primary election day, knowing that's where their votes will most count. In 2014, for instance, Senator Schatz's primary race against Colleen Hanabusa determined our next U.S. Senator far more than the general election did. Voters knew it would, and they acted accordingly. In this way, the Democratic Party's nominee is not purely a product of the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, the Republican nominee is selected without the input of more strategizing conservatives. This imbalance costs the majority in terms of ideological purity and costs the minority in terms of electoral savvy. And thus, the imbalance perpetuates itself. The political cliff will likely erode even steeper in coming years if today's momentum continues. 
a mere four members of our state legislature arguably hold more power than all 72 other members combined. These four leaders pull others from their party up through the ranks, cementing future odds in the majority's favor as well. Several minority candidates have recently succumbed to the power imbalance by switching parties. One might be concerned, moreover, that Donald Trump's incendiary candidacy will cause many who once voted Republican to stay home on Election Day. This will impact local races more than the national race, and Hawaii's political scene could slide even further off balance next year. If we let it, we will see the results, hopefully not after it's too late. I'm Elise Anderson with this week's Think Tech Commentary. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Anu, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Anu does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern and volunteer to help us reach Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Anu Hittel. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.